Greetings and welcome. Today we will be looking at a very interesting website which is, will be very useful for students as well as researchers. We will be looking at the website Our World in Data. To access the website, the URL is ourworldindata.org. Now, Our World in Data contains current information and it is updated regularly. What is very interesting about this site is that you can cite the data and the license is a Creative Commons Attribution license. It's a CC BY license. So you can cite this data in your publications as well as in your presentations. Now the website itself is very beautiful in its design and the data is very clear. Today I will be looking at crop yields. Now crop yields are very interesting to observe or to study in countries across the world because crop yields provide you insights with regard to the policies and practices which are adopted by every country in order to improve their crop yield. And what can be seen from the data or what can be observed from the data is that certain countries have adopted practices which have led to exponential increases in yield. For instance, wheat. The traditional producers are in this region which are India and Pakistan and the USA. But what is observed is that in the United States the yield has plateaued out as the graph shows you and in India and Pakistan as well you see a plateauing out of the yield. However, certain countries have leveraged the potential of productivity and Ireland is one country which produces consistently very high yields over the years. New Zealand as well and in the case of New Zealand there has been an exponential increase in the production of wheat. Now this can be attributed to specific practices which they may have adopted in their countries whereas certain countries which have lagged behind in adopting these practices have shown a plateauing out of the yield. What is very interesting to note that Saudi Arabia and Egypt produce very high yields of wheat as well as in Central Asia you have Uzbekistan which is also a producer of wheat. Let us look at the next crop which is traditionally Southeast Asian in origin which is rice. Now rice yields have been stagnating and they have plateaued out so Southeast Asian yields as you can observe are relatively low. So Indonesia is leading in this region as well as Papua New Guinea so you get about four tons and the rest of the countries basically are plateaued out now traditionally these are the rice growing countries of the world however the yield is low surprisingly Oman has taken some steps either in its policy or in its practices which have led to a significant increase of 13.35 tons per hectare and the USA as well is fast outgrowing Southeast Asia as a producer of rice and this is evident across European Union so obviously they are relying on rice as a staple and focusing on the increased productivity of that particular crop perhaps it is as a policy shift to reduce dependent on Southeast Asia look at the next crop which is potato so again, potato yields have increased significantly in the USA as well as in South America and Australia. Traditional countries such as India and Pakistan are plateauing out with regard to production but the European Union traditionally has been leading in the yield per hectare due to the dependence on potatoes for their staple food. Okay, let's look at oil palm which is one of the most um, efficient in terms of production uh, cost. So if you look at oil palm we notice that the traditional countries which are producing oil palm which is Malaysia and Indonesia have plateaued out at around 18 tons 17 to 18 tons per hectare and there has no been no improvement significant improvement in the yield in terms of the productivity per hectare as the Agronomic practice are likely to be similar. Thailand is a new entrant and then we have an increase in the productivity in Thailand. And China surprisingly is also adopting oil palm as a crop. 
Now, in South America, Nicaragua produces the highest yield in terms of per hectare. So it's about 58 tons per hectare. And then we have Colombia. These are new entrants in the oil palm industry, which have accelerated their production and are outstripping the Southeast Asian countries such as Malaysia and Indonesia. Now, in Africa, which is the origin of the oil palm itself, there's not much improvement in the yield. And this is probably because of the lack of implementation of the relevant policies in their respective countries. Let us look at some of the minor crops, which are co cocoa and coffee. So cocoa is produced primarily along the equatorial region. So Guatemala and Thailand are producers of the cocoa bean and Malaysia has dropped in production as well as Indonesia and this may be due to the emergence of diseases and pathogens in the cocoa plantations. Surprisingly most of the European countries and the sub-Saharan African countries do not produce uh, cocoa even though they have the potential to produce and this may be due to the uh, unique climatic conditions in those particular regions. Let us look at coffee and coffee surprisingly China and Brazil are producing a lot of coffee. There has been an exponential increase and this may be due to breeding programs. In the US the yield is stagnating and declining and in Malaysia surprisingly the yield is very high. We have about four tons almost four tons per hectare of yield. So this is primarily because of the uh, adopt adoption of new agronomic practices. And in Vietnam, which is a traditional producer of coffee, which has unique blends, of course, the cost, the, the yield is increasing. Papua New Guinea is a relatively new entrant and it's producing one ton per hectare. And then we have Sierra Leone, which is producing about 2.13 tons per hectare and is the one of the top producers in Africa. Now this all shows us the fact that policies and practices have a significant impact on productivity. For instance, you, if you observe this map of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, you will note that many of the regions are adjacent to each other. They may be sharing similar uh, climatic uh, regimens as well as the soil types. However, certain countries have adopted uh, these practices and boosted the yield of the coffee crop. Now, what's very interesting about this site is that it provides you data, which is the long-term data. So one can determine when a production of a crop, for instance, has plateaued out, which means that the technology has reached its peak in terms of the implementation. And certain crops, of course, if they have a trend which is increasing, which means that they have a potential for improvement either in, by a traditional breeding or by a genetic modification. Now, if you note, the long-term yields of crops, of course, across Europe have achieved a plateau out. However, still Belgium, Netherlands and Germany, as well as the United Kingdom lead in the production. So these countries which are down here still have a long way to go and again, this may be linked to their unique climatic conditions and soil types as well. Okay. Now, corn yields as well have uh, plateaued out. So they are increasing and then they plateau out and this can be seen from the data. Now, what's very interesting with regard to this website is that you can view certain incorporations of technologies or adaptations of technologies. So here you have the long-term trends in the cereal yields in Chile and it shows you how certain practices such as the incorporation of the pesticides, herbicides and the breeding programs have had a significant yield on the production of the crop. Now, if you look at this particular graph, you will see that technology transfer has been a major component in improving the crop yield. So please take your time and explore this website. It's a very useful website. It provides a significant amount of interesting information and you can explore it and make interesting uh, interpretations and also refer to the country specific policies and guidelines and obtain some insights in writing reviews. The website also utilizes a unique time based 
change so with the time based change you can view the data as it evolves over time okay so for instance you see the yield of maize and then you you will observe that in us they have a significant yield when they began to adopt gmo technologies gmo maize okay that's about it from the website so the website is one world in data.org please visit and explore thank you